Uh, Richard Hammond with us later. I'm Richard Hammond. Uh, hello. And I'm on a mission to explore the really, really big. Awesome. Top ten list of insane things I've ever been involved in doing. This is number one. Oh. And yes, I know, everything seems big to me. Am I climbing into an engine? I feel like I've been shrunk. I'll uncover the incredible ways engineers have supersized our world. I'm sure it's supposed to be this close. Oh, I looked over my shoulder. I shouldn't have done that. Reveal that sometimes it's the tiny things that make the Titanic possible. I'm stealing their power. It's <laughs> Hammond looking at big I stuff. CBC Radio 2. It's been almost 20 years since the hamster burst onto our TV screens alongside Jeremy Clarkson and James May and as presenter of Top Gear. Since then, he's had life-threatening crashes, created a new series on Amazon, the Grand Tour, of course, with his mates Clarkson and May, and presented Wildest Weather, a Jungle Quest. Now he's back on our screens tomorrow night in a new nine-part Discovery Channel series called Richard Hammond's Big... Add your own thing. Yeah. Which, uh, Thank you so much. So Thank that you. means you can do a series about anything at all. Yeah, that's clever, isn't it? It's really Don't clever. Don't give that away, but I think no. when you're thinking titles, <laughs> yeah. you want long running and returnable. Mm, of course and there do. it is, right there. It's well, also quite funny, I know. Yeah. Richard Hammond's big. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. not. I see. What you did there, yeah. A lot of people point that out to me as well. Really? Very kind. Do they? Yeah. yeah. You really are sure, <laughs> aren't you? Am I? Uh, right. What's the situation, first of all? about the Grand Tour. Is that it's all uh, coming back? Yeah, yeah, well, we're, we're doing the specials. So we decided that uh, those are the bits people like best, you know, when we go off on the big adventures yeah. and argue somewhere foreign and complicated. And so we're focusing on that. Is we're it four a year or something like that? It's two a year. Oh, two a year. Yeah, okay. They're the best bits, the bits people like. Oh, they're brilliant. If, if you've got a box of chocolates and there's, like, one that you like, mm. you don't like the rest. <laughs> so there's no coffee creams in it anymore. No. <laughs> or the green ones. Yeah, I, I can see this getting carried away and it's just talking about that. <laughs> Yeah. Five minutes. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know what I mean. By the way, does he do millionaire with you when Tall, you're not filming? Irritating. <laughs> yeah. Old. And he's very well indeed, as yes, in irritatingly good form. All right. Now, uh, in this series, you look at uh, engineering that goes into some of the largest structures on the planet. Yes. So, what are we talking then, Richard? Well, it's not unfamiliar territory for me. I love engineering shows. I'm not an engineer nor a scientist. I'm pretty useless. Are you? Really. I thought you no. were. That's the reason no. we booked you. No, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm basically useless. But. When I'm doing engineering and science programmes, that's good. You bring a natural curiosity. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, I do. And because I have no reputation to uphold, I have no dignity that I bring. So I'm not afraid to ask the dumbest question in the world until, well, if I can understand it, you, the viewer, trust me, assuming you've, you've operated your own television yeah. and are facing the right way on your sofa, you can understand anything I can understand. Well, to be honest with you, the one that I saw, it's asking the exact questions that I would have asked, uh, you know, as a Hunter, as somebody doesn't know anything. Well, there you go. The point is, we're approaching these things from the angle of big, because what we want to know is what happens when you've got like an interesting thing, be a freight plane or a tower or a tunnel or a dam. What about when it gets really, really big? How does that change not just the design of it, but how it functions day to day and how it impacts on the people that work on it? Because like all engineering shows, get this, it's about meeting people doing incredible jobs that you never normally see. There's one of them underground in the Brenner Tunnel. And you know those tunnel boring machines? Mm, the great yeah, big ones yeah, like that, that yeah. spin and Amazing. chew into the rock. They let us go on one of those oh, great. while it was working. So I was standing at the very front of it while it's turning around and chewing through fresh rock. No human being has ever stood where we were standing and there's all bits of rock falling in and landing oh, on us. And I'm looking around thinking, is anybody else worried about this? Anybody else thinking this is? But they were all very calm. <laughs> it was OK, though. Yeah, well... They knew what they were doing, even yeah, if you didn't. It was a, a lady engineer down sort of behind us was driving it, so she just drives this thing that chews through solid rock kilometres underneath the They're ground. They're brilliant. That's and brilliant. that's a whole world of people who are going on right now doing yeah, those jobs yeah. all over the world. You've got to tell us about the big, big, big car factory oh, in yeah. Germany. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like it takes up part of the land. Yeah, it's the VW plant in Wolfsburg. It's 63 thousand people work there. It's three times the size of Monaco. Wow. It's got four bus routes in it. So you commute <laughs> to work. Within work. And then you get on the bus and commute <laughs> to work. And it produces a new car every 16 seconds? It absolutely does. There's something like 12 miles of line and at one point they let me have a go. <laughs> but because of, obviously if you hold up 
the line, there's a lot of shouting. <laughs> and also, they're German, because it's in Germany. And you know how we say, oh, yeah, the Germans are all sticklers for punctuality and yeah. accuracy? They really are. Yeah. And they know that we think that. They also think we're shabby, disorganised and late. <laughs> so when I turned up late for every interview, hi, sir, yes, you're late. I know, I'm really sorry. Oh, they no. think it's funny. Um, stay there, Richard. I'm not Hammond going anywhere. Here. Don't go anywhere. Uh, we're talking about the Discovery <laughs> Series. It's on tomorrow, 9 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's called... Uh, Richard Hammond's big and then you put in your thing and like that. <laughs> I'm on the foot plate of a 67 ton specialised freight locomotive. Driving through Europe's largest private rail station. But I'm not here to talk about trains or railway stations. I'm here to talk about something much, much bigger. And incredibly, this entire train is about to drive into it. <laughs> We're here with Richard Hammond, and we're talking about his Discovery series, Richard Hammond's Big. And uh, before the music there, we heard a clip from the show. I think that's a show that goes out tomorrow night. There's a whole series. Uh, is it nine parts? Uh, there are nine parts. Starts yeah. at nine o'clock tomorrow night in the UK, but it's global. Of course so it is. So it'll roll yeah. out in other territories. Well, you're global Later. now. Well, you've always yeah. been global, haven't you? Pretty much. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm from Birmingham, but kind of global. <laughs> yeah, he's global, you know. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, he's global. Yeah, you can tell, me. tell by the way I walk when I came in. <laughs> I you know loads of people that know he's global. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You got a question there, Tom. Where's this going? I was now? going to ask who decided yes. what you actually focused on in this series. Did you have an input into this? Yeah, absolutely. The whole team did. But it's dependent on access because the whole series is about really getting to grips. So whether it's the tallest building in the world or a massive, we did a, a container ship, and yeah. it, it's like a quarter of a mile long. This I thing, love this. but we need to be able to crawl all over it. So by the end of watching the show, it's like an access all areas thing, and you think I've been. Mean, it's ruined me for travel now because whenever I go anywhere, I'm thinking, well, why can't I go up there? <laughs> Why can't I go in the engine room and see how it works? Because I'm not making a TV show about it. So it depends. Whatever we could find that had the stories that would last and the people that would resonate and we were interested in, and then they'd let us do what we wanted to do. We know you really well, and we know that you've been involved in some pretty serious accidents over the years. And I'm thinking, I, th I mean, I do think that you might be 5 to 10% uh, loopy. I'm 5% metal at the moment because my legs <laughs> held together with it. Well, I, just... well, exactly. I mean, which is even more reason. I mean, you do things with great heights and you don't seem to have any fear. I lack the imagination and intellect. <laughs> Too shallow. Easy. Exactly, exactly. It's quite easy. It doesn't occur to me. Until somebody says, what would happen if you fell off? Oh, my... No, actually, no, that's untrue. I'm terrified of heights. Are you? Really? Didn't used to be. But secret, by the end of this series, really? the last shows we recorded was on the Burj Khalifa, tallest building in the world, 862 Dubai. metres tall. Exactly wow. right. And I went to the top. And I don't mean like the bit that you can go to as a tourist. Mm. You know the little spike yep, bit on yeah. top? Mm. Only me and Tom Cruise have been up there, mate. All oh, right, yeah. you and your mate Tom. Yeah, people <laughs> off the screen of a diminutive stature are allowed up there. And <laughs> How do you do that? How do you overcome that fear? Well, uh, weirdly, it overcame my fear. I seem to have got past it. I, I never used to be scared of heights as a kid. Mm. Then when I had kids, I became scared of heights. And now I've scared my fear away. Mm -hmm. So, although I did abseil off the side of the tallest building in the world, and I'll be honest, that was a bit quivery. I, I wasn't you, very brave and manly on screen. You are an action man, for really? real. Really? No, I'm not. I'm 50, mate. I thought you were about 35. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not dealing with it well. Uh, how do you feel about it? Not good? Pretty miserable. Why? But people say, oh, it's just a number. Yeah, beginning with five <laughs> next to my name. I don't like it. <laughs> so right. it's just a number, but it's a really massive number. I don't like it. Uh, now, I've just discovered you're going to be starring alongside Mythbusters' uh, Tori Belecci in a new series from Amazon. This is where you're going to be on a desert island, right? Yeah. Um, Real desert island discs. Oh, we're trying something a bit crazy and different. If you remember Mythbusters that he used to make. Yeah. Uh, Brainiac was a show I used to make mm. 120 years ago. Mm. And we're going after that, but in a whole new way. Or, if it's catastrophic and bad, yeah. well, I'll just stay on the island. Yeah, yeah, fair <laughs> enough. OK. Uh, now, the new series, Richard Hammond's Big, begins at 9pm. It's tomorrow night on Discovery Channel. So you've got that, and then you've got the Amazon thing, and then you've got the Grand Tour as well. Yeah. Richard yeah. Hammond, everybody. Nice to see you all. See you soon. See you soon. Happy New Year again. Happy New Year. Where's the door? Can I my keys back? Please.